Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from North Light Images and this is uh, another in my series of short videos about aspects of photography business, the business of photography. Uh, it's based on questions I've been asked because I get quite a few people say, you know, uh, can I be a photographer, etc, etc, what do I need to do? And this is just a few examples that um, I've been asked over the years and my opinions on whether the questions really mean anything, what you should do, what you should really do, and uh, so on. But anyway, let's kick off with uh, uh, one I've covered partly in some others, and it's a question I get asked. It's, what camera is best? I don't know. Um, the one that gets you the photos of sufficient quality for the job that you need to do. Um, it's symptomatic, though, of a concentration on the mechanics of photography as opposed to what you want to achieve, as opposed to thinking of the results. Um, I use a Canon 5DS. I use a 5DS because it's really high resolution. I do quite a lot of architectural photography, industrial photography and stuff that needs the high resolution, benefits from it. For interior shots, it allows me to shoot wide and then crop quite easily uh, because very few clients want 50 megapixel images. They don't need them, so they often get reduced. Gives you uh, ability to crop. But that's just for the kind of work I do. Now, I use the Canon 5DS because of the range of Canon tilt shift lenses uh, because they are an integral part of my work. Now, it in some ways, having those lenses enables me to do certain types of work. But it's also because I want to do that work, I've got those particular sorts of lenses. Um, I would not recommend a comprehensive set of tilt shift lenses to a wedding photographer. Uh, not unless they've got an awful lot of spare cash burning holes in the pockets, because these lenses are expensive, but the results are worth it. This was done with a 17mm, if I remember correctly. Um, the particular perspective and work is difficult to do in a single shot without um, using a specialist lens. But a more general question is what about backup cameras? Now the need for a backup camera depends on several things. One, how important is the work? Can you, if a camera breaks or you lose your card halfway through the project, is that going to cause anything other than mild embarrassment and inconvenience to you? If so, then a backup camera, well, it depends how much weight you want to carry around and what you use. I use, I'm shooting this on, a, on an EOS uh, mirrorless camera, um, small RP, full frame, 26 megapixels. It's great if I need to just take some pictures and for some reason the 5DS wasn't available. Um, most of the time, I don't bother taking it. Some jobs, however, you probably do need a backup camera, and it depends on that. So the most obvious one where you want full backup of everything is wedding photography. Um, you are not going to get a chance to restage the event. If your camera fails, batteries fail, flash fails, anything like that, you've got to have spares. Uh, now, you can accept maybe a little bit of reduction, because some things are unlikely to break. So having spare lenses, duplicates of every single lens, is rather excessive. However, you might have two cameras with you, one with one lens, one with another, allowing you to switch between things very quickly. Um, it depends on the job you're doing. So for wedding photography, yes, yeah, duplicates, you need stuff like that. Having the same camera is a good idea because then you don't have to think, what camera am I using here? What's this particular setting? It's just same camera, same thing. So you're straight for that. For my industrial photography, I still use my Canon, well, some of my industrial photography in messy places, foundries, for example, quarries. Um, I still use my old 2007 Canon 1DS Mark III, a mere 21 megapixels. Um, why do I use it? Because in a quarry, I can use it to break rocks. It's that solidly built. It's dust sealed. 
Um, if I'm in a foundry, there is all kinds of nasty dust about, and it tends to be dust that will cause damage if it gets into things. Hence, use a good rock-solid camera like that. So I have, you know, I use what would be my backup camera, the 1DS Mark III, is my prime camera for some shots, for things like that. Others, I'll use the 5DS. Now, at some point, Canon will bring out a mirrorless version of the 5DS, and I'll get one of those, and my 5DS will be a general backup. Up. Um, that's if I don't find someone to lend it to who wants to have a have a play with a camera. Um, I don't like having old kit sitting about not being used, so um, you know, I, I'm happy to lend it out to friends and things like that. In fact, the lens that this is being shot on is an Olympus OM 24mm 2.8 uh, lens from uh, my old OM2. Uh, that I used to shoot with film days. It's just a very nice lens, fully manual lens, um, and it works perfectly well for these relatively simple videos that I'm doing. If I'm doing architectural photography, um, I almost certainly, unless it's a, a, you know, a, a job where I can't get back to something or that, I may not even bother with a spare. Um, but if I do, it'll be something like the RP, uh, where I can get stuff. I haven't got spare lenses, uh, it just depends on the importance of the job, but it is worth considering depending on what you do. If you're doing studio work, it depends on how quick the turnaround is required for the work you're doing. If it's portrait work, well, you can't necessarily get people in again. Uh, if it's product work, well, you're just going to be delayed a bit. So it's really a matter of considering what sort of work you do and whether the backup is relevant. Uh, next, a, a one which I'm not going to go into in, in great detail because I've covered it elsewhere and various things. How much should I charge for my photography? Well, uh, the blunt answer is as much as you can get away with. Um, you know, business is there to make a profit. Now, I hear people going, oh, but, but, you know, people will come in cheaper. Yeah, people will always come in cheaper. Uh, depends whether you want to work for free or not. I, something I've covered in another video looking at that, whether that's ever worthwhile. But bear this in mind, if I've got 100 clients, and oh, I wish uh, after, after the year we've had, if I've got 100 clients and I decide to up my prices arbitrarily by, oh, I don't know, 50%. Now, some of those clients are gonna go, who no, and they're gonna leave. Other ones of the clients are going to think, Keith does a really good job for us, does all the photos we need, Psh, whatever, they'll pay. I've lost some business, but the remaining business is now far more profitable. And it's quite possible that by putting your prices up, you lose a few people, but the additional profitability you get more than makes up for the ones you've lost. And the other thing to remember is the people you lose through putting your prices up are rarely ever the ideal clients. They are rarely clients that have much sort of connection with you. They may well have hired you on price. If somebody hires you on price, they will drop you on price. Uh, now, all our best clients are people I've known for a period of time. I know what they want. They know what they'll get. And that's a key of making a sustainable business. So the pricing may seem important at the start. As so I've looked at this in other areas, aspects of pricing and working out things like this. But don't be afraid if you are producing products that clients want of perhaps putting your prices up. As I said, um, probably, yeah, as much as you can get away with. Um, although that's perhaps not the phrase you'd use uh, when talking to people who are actually going to be paying you. Next one, um, how are my personal projects? Uh, personal projects, you mean lack of work. Now, that's a somewhat cynical way of looking at it. Um, and yes, it is. Um, often people do stuff, uh, their own photography, uh, when they haven't got much work. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's an important thing to do to do your own photography, both to keep your interest in photography going and also to refine, learn new skills. Uh, that's a key part of it. Um, how you want to dress this up is entirely up to you. But I would say don't 
do so much work that you've got no time to actually stop and take photos of things you like. Uh, I do architectural photography and uh, this uh, picture at uh, Steps at Wells Cathedral is one I did on a personal visit there. Nobody was paying me for this. Um, I was actually testing out a lens. Um, I wanted it and I particularly wanted to take a photograph of this particular view of the steps leading uh, up uh, in uh, Wells Cathedral and you know it's a personal project. Now it happens that I've used the picture all over the place um, and I have actually sold copies of prints of it. Well yeah so that's a bit of a bonus but when it comes down to it it was a personal project. So don't beat yourself up about it thinking oh well uh, yeah I've got to be working I've got to be earning money. Take a longer view. If I hadn't taken that longer view of things I'd have never got round to writing a book about how to use tilt shift lenses. So um, that, in a way, is a personal project. Um, I have been paid for the book. Um, you know, it's not. It, it has actually earned me money, and is earning money. Hence, please buy my book. But um, it's there. It was a personal project. Uh, writing a book like this uh, is a lot of work. Um, you know, if nothing else, there are hundreds and hundreds of photos in it. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a personal project. Uh, find your own, find something you enjoy doing. Uh, it doesn't always have to make some money. And also, as I say, doing stuff you enjoy helps gives that little bit of spark for when you're doing work, which as a professional photographer you will have to do, that you're not that interested in. Just gives that bit, extra bit of thing. Lastly, I'll come back, you know, the question, you know, somebody just says, oh, should I become a pro photographer? Well, I don't know. Um, how am I going to know? Only you can find that out. Now, I would say that if you are going to do it, think through the financial implications very carefully. Plan it. Have a business plan. Even if it's a relatively simple one, have a business plan. But do have some escape points. Because when I took up photography it was such a change of career uh, that if I did it for too long and then stopped doing it I would have had too long a break from the previous type of work and it would have made it difficult for me to return to doing that sort of work. Now given that sort of work is what paid for the house and other things uh, you can see I didn't want to burn all my bridges for it so have a point of when you expect when you can seriously look at the business and go um, is this for me? Maybe a couple of years, maybe a year, a couple of, I would say it needs to be at least a couple of years to see seriously whether you're adapting, whether you can actually make it as this. Um, but be prepared, take other people's help if need be, be prepared to say, well, that was fun, that was interesting, but it's not going to make me my fortune. Well, actually, photography is probably not going to make your fortune anyway, but uh, yeah, it, it's, not, it's not for me. Um, have your CV live, uh, work out ways of using your time spent as a photographer as a positive when you go for job interviews. Um, Emphasise the, the skills you've developed and things, the business skills, etc, 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 if you need to go back to getting a real job. Because uh, it might happen, uh, you don't know. Uh, but uh, hopefully it won't, um, and this is of some help. But please do Feel free to make comments, uh, ask questions on this. Please subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. Have a look at some of the playlists because they cover all sorts of things on that. And um, hopefully this has been of interest. Thank you.